Hey guys, today is gonna to be all about this new motion control system from Exibo. I've been really excited to play with this thing for the last couple months because it's not only just a motion control system, it has a couple really cool functions up its sleeve that I have not seen before, especially in something at this price point. Now you might know that I've used the Rhino Slider motion control in the past for a lot of my miniature projects, and this thing has been a big step up. Despite the company being pretty new, they've been bringing the features that have made me really excited, and so far it's been awesome. So I wanna share with you what it is and what it isn't, and get in to all the really interesting features that it's bringing. Essentially what it is, is a motion control slider, pan and tilt head, as well as a focus motor and a zoom motor if you want those. You can keyframe as many keyframes as you'd like and get a precise and accurate movement that is repeatable every time. And so far it has been really accurate for me. This is not just an average motion control system either. It has an AI engine built in that does subject tracking and a few other things. So you could have someone walking around and it would actually follow their movements really well. And it has an Unreal Engine integration that is not something I've seen before, especially at this price point. I can essentially put backgrounds from Unreal Engine behind my miniatures on a live screen and the camera movement in real life would sync perfectly in real time with that, making it a seamless background, kind of like the virtual production stuff that you see in TV shows like The Mandalorian, where they're using these huge, massive, LED walls. This is something that I've been really wanting to get into and I'm going to expound on that in a future video. But for now, I'm gonna get into all of the details of what makes this a really great motion system to begin with and tease some of those extra features a little later. Now, Exibo, the company, is brand new. They had a Kickstarter where they started with this and I kinda of got in right after that where they started shipping the main production units. And so there are bugs and things that have come across, at least in some of my testing, but they've been giving out software updates and even adding complete new features really quickly and often, which is making this thing stand out really to me. I used to use the Rhino slider, um, the Arc 2 motion control. And while it does its basic functions really well, I had a lot of frustrations and limitations with it and I wanted something a little more. And this has been so far really great for exploring a lot of the ideas and things that I have. So when I first got it, it came with a high torque motor, which was capable of pulling this camera rig and an even much heavier camera rig in a complete vertical move without a need for a counterbalance system or anything like that, which was awesome. But it was a little slow for your average moves and especially if you wanted to do something in slow motion, it would have, it would have moved too slow. So I started talking to them about a high speed motor and it turned out they already had one in development and they've even given me a new software update that is kind of in beta right now that's made it even faster than it was previously. So as it is now with this update, it is a much faster slider than my Rhino slider, even with the high speed motor. I have both the high torque and high speed motor for my Rhino as well. And this just outperforms both of those. I can't do a vertical move on my Rhino without a counter counterbalance system. I can easily just mount this vertical and go. Now some might think that the high speed that this is capable of doing right now is almost too fast, but sometimes I like to go even up to 120 frames per second and get a very fast move and slow everything down to make moving things like dust and, and fog in the air look more life-size. So a little later in this video, I am gonna go into how I've been using this for my miniature filmmaking and some of those techniques. But first I'm gonna go through and kind of just show you some of the basic functions and start talking about what is actually really different about this motion control system. So the main way to control the Exibo is through the software over the network. You can either connect your device directly to the Exibo wireless network or connect it to your wireless network or with an ethernet cable. And then you just type in the IP address for the unit in a browser on your phone, laptop, tablet, and you can control all of the functions from there. Now on the Rhino, you do have joystick and buttons to program moves right on it. And you don't have that here, but they send you a gamepad, which is very much like a PlayStation controller that controls all of those basic functions and allows you to run moves really quickly. It comes prepared. And so that is a nice quick way to do it, but I prefer the more precise controls in the software. And so I'm usually on that. And then the other note I will say is it comes with a power adapter to have it powered from the wall at all times. But you can also power it with two Sony batteries, which is really awesome, especially if you're gonna be taking it out in the field and especially for time lapses or something like that. 
So this is the advanced keyframing page where I spend most of my time when I'm making basic moves. I can set keyframes and run the moves repeatedly. So as you can see, if I come over here to this plus button and open this tab, it gives me the controls for pan and tilt, focus and slide. And if I grab the slider, you can see it's moving back and forth now and you can just slide it directly into position. There's also this precise mode, mode where you can just click to pan and tilt and slide in a much more precise way. So I'm gonna set a couple keyframes and just show you a basic move and show you how fast this thing can move with the high speed motor right now. So if I start a keyframe here and then I move the slide most of the way down, maybe I'll tilt it down a little bit and to the side just so there's some movement there and I'll add that second keyframe. Now you can see it added these two keyframes and right here is the duration of the move. With this slider, you can adjust how fast or how slow that move would be. So if I set it to about eight seconds here, and then I click on this go to point button, it'll reset to that first keyframe. And then I can simply just hit play and it'll play that move. So as you can see right now, it has a really nice ease in and out of the move. It goes in and just slowly comes to a stop. And that's really great for these nice, slow, steady moves. Now let's see what happens if I reset it and tell it to go as fast as it can. So right now it's saying the move would only be two seconds to run. All right, so let's just see what that move would look like in only two seconds. Now I think you could see there was a little stutter in the beginning, and I think that might be because of this new update and how it's moving at the fastest speed right now. I'm sure that'll get cleared up, but the move is really fast, and if I had set this in 60 frames, 120 frames, I could actually get a much more normal looking move because it'll be five times slower and freeze some of that stuff that moves too fast, like the dancing fog inside of my miniatures. It just moves too fast in that tiny space to look lifelike in real time, and this will help me get really dynamic moves because of how fast it can move but probably most of you are going to be using it for interviews or for B-roll shots or you know, standard real-time moves. And so something like a 10 second, 11 second move is going to be really great. And you can just see the precise, you know, smooth motion that is here. And trust me, when I'm using my macro pro lens, which is really a long lens, any kind of micro vibration or jitter shows up big time. And I've had zero issues with any of the motors on the Exebo, It's just worked really, really well for smooth, precise moves. Now I can also do multiple keyframes, not just two. I can set three, five, 10, however I'd like. And so if you have multiple focus points, you can set multiple keyframes to make sure your focus is always spot on. Or if you have multiple types of moves, if you wanna look at certain different, you know, different things and have a really elaborate setup, you can keyframe all of that into it and adjust that in the software. All right, so to keep going through some of the functions of this, I'm gonna show you some of the other pages in the software. The next one is going to be time-lapse. If you do any time-lapse work at all, this is where you could set up a whole time-lapse, different moves over a certain period of time and set all the frames and all of that. The next page would be tracking. I'm gonna come back to that and show you that live. This next one is target track. This is an interesting feature where if you needed to just direct the camera to multiple different angles while doing a live stream or something like that, you could have multiple track targets. Um, this is a focus tracking page. They're coming out with a focus module that I don't have yet and that'll be used here. And then this is the virtual production page where you would set up a live link into Unreal Engine and set up that entire production uh, pipeline. Here's the settings page where you can calibrate some of the motors, update the software, and do a few other things. There is an early integration here of focus calibration. In the very near future, both focus and zoom calibration is going to be something that is gonna be really powerful. So you know how, especially on these photography lenses, if you rotate the, the focus or zoom, there are parts of the lens where it'll focus or zoom slowly and other parts that move kind of quickly depending on how much movement you're, you're actually giving it. It's because it doesn't change linearly on the lens. Maybe when you're in the macro range, it can focus slowly for a more fine adjustment, but when you get to more infinity, it moves very quickly. Focus and zoom calibration is going to intelligently map out your lens so you don't have to set a million keyframes to make sure your focus is perfect across an, a large move. It'll actually be able to do that for you with calibration and that's 
coming very soon in its full form. The other big thing that they're working on that's coming very soon in an update is going to be full support for DragonFrame. DragonFrame is a software that is used by a lot of people that do stop motion, but it also does full real-time motion control and has so many little functions, basically an entire studio in a software. And you're gonna be able to use basically all of its functionality with the Exibo system and be able to take motors from elsewhere and control that in tandem with the Exivo all through DragonFrame, and that's also coming very soon. So now to get back to the tracking function, I'm going to move the camera forward a little bit so there's a little space between me and it, and I'm gonna spin the camera around so that it can start trying to track my face as I move around, and I'll show you that live so you can see just how it performs. And you can see on this little screen, this is the built-in camera on the Exivo, and using this camera for tracking is actually very fast, and in some situations it's even better than using your actual camera's feed, but you always have the option of taking an HDMI cable from your camera into the Exibo, and then you can track right through your camera. But here's the screen. You can see that there's already focus points jumping up on different parts of me. So I'm gonna click on my face, and I'm gonna say start track. And you can immediately see that it kicked in and moved the frame to where it thinks I should be. Now there is a tracking offset here, where if I want myself to be a little more centered, or maybe I want me to be on the, the left third of the image. I've set that offset and now wherever I move, the camera will keep me in that area. So if I just start moving around now, you can see that the camera chases me pretty well and pretty smoothly. And even if I go up and down, and this is just with the pan and tilt option right now. There also is the option to have the camera sliding back and forth kind of like an interview situation maybe, but also track my face. And so if I was talking and I wanted this to be a B-cam, but I was also moving around and grabbing certain tools from my, my shop or something, it can be moving back and forth like a nice smooth slider, but track my motion so that I never leave the frame. So if I click slide here, the slider comes up and right now it was set to, to pretty fast. So if I turn the slider speed down, it will now be sliding back and forth, which right now I have a black backdrop, but you can see it on the main camera. And wherever I move, it is still following me while making that slide happen. So right now I'm just gonna stop the move, stop the track, and I'm gonna move on and start to talk a little bit about how I would use this system for my miniature cinematography. So I've basically just set up a quick push in move that I'm gonna do really fast on the slider and try to use slow motion to slow down the atmosphere aerosol that I'm gonna spray in there, the haze particles, to make it look a little more lifelike. So I'm just going ahead and using my haze and setting this move to go in this just quick push in motion. Hopefully in this final shot, you can see the particles just nice and slowed down by me using the slow motion effect and going faster on the slider. I didn't even use the max speed on the slider so I know I have a lot more options in the future. So you probably saw that I didn't even use a ton of the length of the slider for that move, and that happens a lot when I'm filming my miniatures, where I only need a few inches of movement or something like that. And one big frustration I had with the Rhino was though it could move fairly quickly, it only had a preset seven or five seconds as the absolute quickest you could set. So whether it was the entire length of the slider or just five inches, you were stuck to using that length. And so these little movements, I could not do this fast and get that slow motion effect just because of the software in the, in the Rhino. And like I said, Exibo has been putting out a lot of updates. So there's new features coming all the time. So it just makes it really exciting. So before we go, I wanna just say what I think this Exibo system is and what it isn't. It's a great motion control system with some really interesting features right now. Some features like the Unreal integration that I haven't seen in any system like this, especially not at this price point. And for what it is, it is great. It is very new, and so certain things will either have bugs or maybe not work as well as they're going to because they're working on certain features. And I've equated this a little bit to my journey with 3D printers. Some of them are very cutting edge with the features, uh, but aren't as solid because they just haven't had enough time. And so I think that is kind of what Exibo is. I haven't had any trouble that have just stopped my filming or anything like that. But there's been little bugs and they're working on fixing those as they grow as a company. 
and make their product more stable. And they're also increasing the amount of features and functionality of this thing all the time. So as new features come, there's gonna be some testing periods and, and stuff like that. So what it isn't is a system like the Kessler system that is backed by a company that has been around and been a staple in the film industry for a really long time now. They are a brand new company, but they are working really hard to establish themselves as a company that is doing new things and doing them well. The, the quality of the product is super high. You can tell as soon as you pull it out of the box, it's just heavy duty, it is built like a tank, and they seem to really know what they're talking about when it comes to software because they've integrated more changes even in just talking with me over the last couple months than I've seen Rhino and integrate over a couple years. So if you're somebody that's really looking for something new and gives you a little more functionality but you don't want to spend the top dollar that you might have to with a company like Kessler, Exibo is going to be really interesting for you. If you want something that is going to be just the absolute simplest and easiest to bring around, the Rhino is a little bit more lightweight and maybe you more user-friendly to get up and running with just the basic two keyframe moves that you would be using on like an interview set, let's say. But for the price difference, I think the Exibo is one of the most interesting options out there right now. I am using it solely and I continue to just push its boundaries, see what I can do with it and talk with them to try to figure out what we can do next with it, what new features would be awesome to see in it. And I'm sure they would love to hear what feedback you guys have, what features you might like to see stuff like that. So drop that stuff in the comments, certainly reach out to me there and I can try to answer any questions you might have about this. And stay tuned very soon for a bigger video that's gonna integrate the Unreal Engine workflow and really show off this thing for what it is truly unique for. So far, Mr. Inspector has approved. He's been bugging me every time I'm down here working with it because he wants my attention, of course. But I really think it's something really worth looking into if you're interested in any kind of this work and you know for sure that I'll be showing more of it on this channel very soon. So I'll see you guys next time. Are you the best boy ever? Are you the best inspector I've ever known? The internet loves you.